y'all, it's Sarah here, and I've got some new colors for you. Um, today, I'm going to be doing two different colors, actually, and those videos will be done separately, but I did want to show you a comparison. The first one is this really natural look, um, this kind of raw wood look, if you can see. Um, it's got a lot of graining, a lot of detail. I really like this color. Um, it's really neutral. We're going to be using a couple colors to accomplish this. And I want to show you what those are because it's a little bit different than what we have been using. And this one is a little bit diff different process. Um, our main color is going to start with the Waverly Chalk Paint and Mineral. We're going to be using the Waverly Wax and Clear. And we're going to be using just a hint of Waverly Wax and Antique. Um, those are going to be the three colors we're using. As always, I'll be using my little sponges. And I want to get started because this one is a layering look. I really do love this, guys. I don't know if you can see all that detail. That's part of what I want to show is getting some of these, these striations in here, this detailing in here. Um, oh, Really quick, let me show you the comparison to what the other color is going to be. This is like a really natural, raw, um, beigey type wood, kind of, I guess, in the birch family, that kind of family, maybe. Um, the other one that we're going to be doing is more of a plywood, raw wood look. You can see it's kind of got that little more yellow hue to it that plywood would have. And in comparison, you can definitely kind of tell color-wise the difference. One is a very natural tan kind of wood. One is a very yellowy wood. This video will come up next. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to be doing is... I'm going to show you because this, this starts you out as a different look. So here's where we're starting with this mineral color. And this in itself is its own nice look. This is a very neutral, um, creamy kind of color. And you're going to see how to get this right here at the same time. So you're really going to have some options. Hope you can see that. Um, so that's our base coat. This is what we're working towards, and you can see those are still some very different looks. So basically, you're getting three looks today if you catch both videos. I've already done these to be nice and dry, but I'm going to show you how I got to that color, and then I'm going to cheat and use my dry ones to get to the next layer. So let me scoot out a little bit. So our first step is... I am going to I'm gonna grab this and get some clear. I know this looks white, but this is actually what the clear looks like. And I'm gonna start out with the mineral color. And we're not gonna add the antique until after we've applied our mineral and it's had time to draw. And these are really, really light layers of colors this time. So I've got my little sponge. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you when I'm working on my sponges, if I'm to a point where it needs to be a better surface to work with, I'm going to trim this down. I want to keep my shape. I don't really want to go into like a wedge shape. I really like having this flat surface that works all the way across these boards. So my first step, I'm going to go pretty heavy down into the clear wax. This is essentially what we're using more of. And then this is our, um, our tint of color. That's part of the reason why I go with chalk paint is it's it's a thicker, heavier, pigmented color than acrylic. 
And I want to start pretty light. You can always go darker, but it's a lot more difficult to go lighter. And I'll go ahead and do a little distressing on these in case you haven't seen that. So all I'm doing right now, I'm going to do a couple wormholes maybe. I don't do a lot of the wormhole stuff on this particular look because it's light and you don't get a lot of the pigment down into those. But I will do my little knot hole things and I'm going to show you how that gets done. I am taking the corner of my acrylic nail here, which makes them pretty strong. I start with that corner and I spin down into there and it makes it a little easier. I know some of you have asked if my fingers hurt yet. They don't because I'm not really putting much pressure. Once I break that surface, it's not really that big of a deal. And guys, I have not found a tool personally to use that works any better for me than my nails. Um, I know some of you have tried spoons, things like that. I didn't like the spoon method because I got a lot more cracking and um, bending in my board than I really wanted. So on this, where the heavier pigment is going to be, that dust there, I want to start kind of closer to these ends because if you notice, a lot of my graining will start at the ends and fade into the center of the board and work itself around. And I want to show you that now I'm going to start getting into more details on how to get some of these particular grains. Um, if you look at this one, I really love how that grain comes out. So we're going to come in here. I need my paints. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of smear a little of this chalk mix. And you almost cannot even see that it's clear. Get a little of my pigment color here. And I'm going to start kind of heavy. Oh, I guess not very heavy. This mineral color is a very, very neutral. I'm going to drag that across. I'm going to drag that across. And I want to somewhat keep my lines in a same way that a grain on my wood would be. And you can already see where that's already starting to kind of give you that vibe. So those are fairly dark. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pull it through. And it's a hair lighter. And I don't know if you can see that. It is such a light color, but it does have a little color up there. And I'm going to continue to pull those through. This one is certainly one that I'm I'm not doing a lot of the swishing it back and forth like you do, like you can get away with with some of the darker colors, because we want to keep this a very light neutral. So I'm going to come down on this end also, go in a little of that pigment, a little of that wax, and I'm going to pull some of that down. Now if you notice right here, I like when this happens. Um, let's see if you can see that. If you can see that, my my sponge has drug across that just a hair. And I can blend that. And it gives a really nice look. I know these shadows kind of make it difficult. The worst part about this one is getting this uh, pigment down into your little uh, aged kind of knot hole areas. We don't get the level of color to it on the knot holes that we do with other ones. But we're going to go in with our next layer and pull in detail on those. So you can see on this one, there is wax here because I ran the clear wax across this strip first, but I'm leaving a hint of some of the white. So it's being protected because it does have the clear across there. But I'm leaving some of that lighter, some of the darker. Same thing here. I am not trying to achieve full coverage with this uh, mineral color. And I'm using my fingers to change pressure all the way through this sponge. Sometimes I'll use the base of my hand here and push down that way and go lighter with my fingers. I want all the way across here to have 
control of my pressure and each part of my hand is able to put different pressure at different points. And when I do that, I'm keeping my grains very even, but I'm getting a different level of pigment application when I do. So these are pretty good. It's a very simple, this is one of the easiest ones you can do because you're not trying to get full coverage on this. Um, my base coverage was where I hit it with that wax, that fairly clear wax. And then we're just slightly dragging some pigments through of the mineral. So that's all you've got to do to get your base coat. The thing about this color, because these are such light colors, you really, really need to allow there to be a slight drying time between the next layer, unlike we do with some of the darker colors, and we're able to just let it dry as we're working on them and then go to it. These work a little better if you let them dry longer. Because the colors are so light, it's much easier for them to blend, especially because we're going to go over this with the antique. So I'm going to move these out of the way and go ahead and grab a couple of the dry ones. So I'll grab these two guys. So my next step is going to be, I want the most bare minimum of antique that I can get. And honestly, oh, that one's not open. Hold on. What I'd really like to accomplish with that is that this is where I talk about leaving my sponge loaded and stored and a little bit tacky in one like this I could go right now probably with what's loaded on here and start to lay down a little bit of that and you can see that right there you guys can see some of that now I'm pulling in that second color really really lightly Now, if you don't already have your sponge loaded, I'm going to show you how we're doing that. But I did want to show you this is part of the reason why I don't wash my sponges and why I like to keep them um, fairly moist in a Ziploc bag where they have a little pigment. And you can see it's just barely pulling the faintest level of this antique across there. And I'm only doing it in certain spots. I'm still leaving some of my clear waxed areas, some of that mineral area, and then now some of this um, antique area. So those couple of blends start to give you a lot of depth, a lot of realism. And I'm going to show you how to do that if you don't already have a preloaded grungy type sponge. I'm going to go ahead and fill this guy up. Whoops. I'm just going to take my sponge and clean that off. My little, um, the little paper that's usually inside the lids, not the part that you pull off to open it, but the little paper. Mine never want to stay inside my lid, so that's what this is, guys, and I'm just going to pull from it. I might as well use that little bit of product. So I'm going to come in here and I'm getting a little bit of color, but I don't want this super saturated because the wetter we have that, it's going to blur. It'll start having kind of a blurred effect. So I've tapped a lot of that off and I want to show you on a paper plate that we are, we are really loaded with very little product here. I would typically recommend if you're just practicing with this one, definitely just keep a paper towel beside you, um, something like that, so that you can blot that off a little bit. You can always go darker with your paint. In some instances, you can go lighter, but it's a lot harder to go lighter than it is to go darker, and especially when we're working on a color tone like this, it's better to start off and then add to it than it is to try to get it to come off. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I 
I'm hitting my edges first. So this part of the sponge is not really touching anything right now. It's just these two fingers pulling across these edges some. For me, I definitely like my edges a little darker. I feel like it almost shadows them so that when they're side by side, they look like a three-dimensional type board. And I'm just going to drag maybe a little of this antique color across the center section. And I'm barely putting any pressure. I'm changing those two fingers as I drag it across so that I get kind of these interesting... Um, I really don't know what you would call that kind of motion. That Those variances in my swoosh. So... That's what I'm working for. I want to show you, if you get too dark, this is why I keep my less saturated sponge on my tray. If you've seen my little setup, you can lift back some of that color. Not a lot, but you definitely can lift back some of it if you want to. There is nothing on this sponge. I'm just lifting back any extra color that might be there. And you can kind of see. And I'm going to do one more here. Um, and show you hitting across right here. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Everybody's doing yard work today. My allergies are going absolutely crazy. So, on your little knot holes for this one. Now, ordinarily, we get a lot of product in our sponge and we push down into those indentions. I'm not going to do that with this color because I only really want it to kind of skim the top of that. And... So all I'm going to do is just barely drag the sponge across and you can start to see what that does. You could also just tap it just a hair, put a little there, take your dryer sponge and drag across there. And you've got just enough to bring attention to that knot hole, but not uh, take attention away from the entire piece. And I'm just going to go through still really lightly. I'm going to pull, and I changed my pressure. I know it's hard to watch my fingers, but I tend to change my pressure with my fingers on this sponge. That's why I consider this sponge a really great tool and why I like it at this width versus um, just using a sponge that was cut down really small. And you can see there how how much detail those end up with with just that little bit of work this really is a fast fast coverage it's a really fast look other than the fact that you really need to wait before you move on to the antique part you can definitely get this look really fast doing that first layer breezes through it really really quickly um, because you're not doing full coverage on this so on this one, I'm dragging, I'm pushing both of those down, and I'm almost taking up pressure on this much of it. So I've got this heavier section here in the middle. And the more you do this, the more you play with this, the more you'll see how to manipulate that sponge in your hand to really get some looks. You, you want to alternate your looks, even amongst each strip. Just taking it and swooshing it across, that gives you a look, and it's fine, and it depends on which wood you're going for, because there are woods that just have that one continuous, very even grain. But for the most part, you kind of want to get that variety through your pieces. That visual variety, once we add, let's see, you can see those heavier spots where I drag that through. Love those details. But the more variety that we have on these... As you put them together as a collective um, to do a project, to complete a project, that visual variety is really what tells your brain, oh, look, it's a bunch of boards. Um, because in nature, real wood, you're going to get a lot of visual variety. So I want to show you kind of where all four of these meet up. Every single one has a little different visual variety. And now your brain's going, okay, that's there's nothing uniform about that. There's nothing 
equal about those looks, that's real wood. Um, so I hope that kind of gives you a basis. The next one is going to be just as easy, the more yellower toned or golden toned type plywood look. These are a great neutral color to go uh, to go in some of your mixes if you want a lighter color brought in, but you're not really wanting to have undertones to it. You're not wanting a, a cream. You're not wanting a cream color. You're not wanting a yellow color. This actually brings in both of those, so you have um, a balance. Uh, the plywood look definitely has some yellow undertones. You saw when I started with the mineral that it has a very creamy undertone. This ends up having both of those undertones, so it's a really good one to mix in for a lighter color with your, uh, your more colorful collections of slats together. This is what adds a little bit of the yellow back into this so that we get the two colors together. So you're not getting too yellow. You're not getting too creamy. But I hope you guys like that. I really love how this looks. I know most of the time if we're crafting, we typically will craft with real wood and paint it. But there are plenty of instances where I think crafting, you could certainly want to have the raw wood look. I couldn't tell you which raw wood this is supposed to be. I know that there are raw woods out there in this color. I just couldn't tell you what their names are. So I hope you like this one. I really like this one and I can't wait to show you the next one. So that's two different looks. Let me bring that other one back in so that you can see the creamy look you guys can compare. Oh wait, already, already got antique on this one. My bad. So you can kind of see one is a neutral, this, this is just the mineral base coat, and this is once it's gone with a little more of the detailing. So there's two looks right there, and look number three will be in the next video. I will talk to you guys soon. I hope you like this one, and I can't wait to see what you do with this idea. Bye, guys.